Hello, Internet. Meet Charlie, my cute new kitten. He's just so adorable, and I felt he deserved a lofty cat condo as a place just for him in my house. And while I could go out and buy one, I also have this giant pile of scrap wood in my backyard and a troublesome creative need. So I drew up some plans, yes, in crayon, and built something special for Charlie. This is She's Making Something, and today I'm making a cat tree. I already mentioned my crayon plans, don't worry, all the real math was done in pencil, and I cycled through a few designs before settling on one with a cat house on an elevated platform, and then two platform retreats on top to help him get up and out of reach of all the tiny hands in my house. My husband is remodeling our bathroom, so I have this giant pile of scrap wood that used to be cabinets that I'm going to use for the structure, but I also splurged and bought a 2 inch by 4 foot dowel for $15 to use as posts. I could have just used boards or 2x4s, but I liked the look of the cylindrical posts, so it was worth the money to me. I also grabbed this 6x8 foot scrap of durable indoor-outdoor carpet from Home Depot for 20 bucks, which will cover most of the structure. It's a nice, low, tight texture, perfect for tiny claws to scratch and climb, and also some natural fiber rope to wrap around some supports as more scratching posts. After Charlie inspected the supplies and deemed them suitable, I got to work. The cat house was gonna be a 12 by 17 inch rectangle, so I needed four sides and a top, plus the two lofts, one was a 12 inch square and one was a little larger at 12 by 14 inches, and their border pieces, a platform for the house, which was gonna be elevated 15 inches off the ground, which meant I needed a 15 inch long support board, I needed some larger baseboards and a ramp, which I had to pull out some high school math and use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared people, to figure out it needed to be 20 inches long. Once I had it all measured out, then I used a circular saw to fill my garage with sawdust, because as the giant list I just rambled off indicated, there were a lot of cuts to make. I used my favorite miter saw to cut the large dowel into two 15 inch posts as main level supports and then two smaller 9 inch posts for the lofts. A cat house needs doors so I took a 17 inch board and a 12 inch board and cut some rounded openings. They're a little wonky because the jigsaw and I don't get along very well but I don't think Charlie will mind. Then I sand everything down to remove splinters and make things easier to work with before bringing all the pieces inside the house. I just grabbed whatever was big enough to cut from the wood pile, so I'm using a few different types of wood, but they're all about a half inch thick and when they're covered in carpet, you can't really tell them apart anyways. The tricky part of this project was figuring out how to put everything together while hiding as many of the screws as possible under the carpet. So I decided to assemble the loft first because that seemed like the simplest section, which meant pre-drilling holes in the posts and the boards. I wanted the two lofts to be offset from the center, like steps, so I attached the smaller 9 inch post more in the corner of the board instead of the center, and then did the same thing with the second loft. Before I added the carpet, I wrapped one of the posts with the rope, using wood glue to attach it. Why wood glue? I don't know. Because I was working with wood, and it was nearby, I suppose any sort of glue would work, but I pretty much only use wood glue for this project because I'm lazy and didn't want to search around for a different type of glue. I wrapped the rope around as tightly as I could, squishing the coils together so they were compact and adding more and more glue as I went along. After the post was covered, I clamped both ends and left it to dry. When it came time to cover the boards in carpet, I found it easiest to lay them upside down on the wrong side of the carpet with a little more wood glue for some extra staying power and then I cut out the piece I needed. This worked because the measurements didn't have to be exact, but I did need at least an inch extra on all the sides so it could wrap around the edge of the board. To avoid bulk, I cut out the corners of the carpet so I could have a better, smoother fit. And then I used a heavy duty stapler to attach the carpet on the underside of the platform. 
I pulled each side as tightly as I could and attached it with a staple in the middle and on the ends. And once all the sides were in place, I filled it in with so many staples so it would sit as flush as possible and there wouldn't be any hanging gaps. This way I knew it wasn't going to shift around, which is important when you have an active kitty jumping and climbing all over it. I also wrapped my little safety borders for the lofts and carpet, but left the edges that connect with other pieces uncovered. I tried to get the staples as close to the edge as I could so they would be more hidden, but I didn't do that great at it. I got better as the project went on because I used a lot of staples for this project. I used 2 inch screws to attach these pieces so they couldn't be knocked loose very easily. And since I didn't pre-drill the holes for these ones, one of the screws was a little off center and had to be redone. Thankfully the carpet hides most of these mistakes. I originally was going to add some border pieces to both the lofts, but when I saw how much space the post took up, I decided to only use the borders on the very top platform, just so he would have a little bit of a corner to curl up in as he rested way up there. Now that both lofts are carpeted and fully assembled, I can attach them together once again using the pilot holes to help line up the post. My original design meant for these posts to be in line with each other but because of balance issues, they're a little offset. Hello, Charlie. And speaking of balance issues, I did not want this thing to topple over, so I made sure the base was bigger than any of the platforms and measured 20 by 24 inches. Then to make it nice and heavy to hold everything to the ground, I made it double layered. So I added some wood glue between the two pieces and then screwed them together. Before I covered the baseboards with carpet, I wanted to make sure all my supports for the elevated platform would line up the way they should and stand nice and straight. I could have used a level and make it all plumb official like when I attached everything, but I decided to just pre-drill the holes for the supports in the platform and the base at the same time, so I knew they would line up with each other. It probably wouldn't pass any sort of code, but it was my little hack and seriously saved me some time and headaches later. Some more carpet and staples, and I have a nice heavy base for my cat tree. We will now enjoy a short break for Charlie Cuteness. Anyways, back to me and my project. The supports for my platform were the two 15 inch posts, one of which was left as the bare wood and the other was wrapped in the rest of the rope, and then a 15 inch long board wrapped in the carpet. Like the lofts, I attached the supports first and then wrapped the platform and carpet, covering up the screws. When I attached the post, I actually used two screws, and I did this with the lofts to stop them from spinning around and coming loose, and I do it again here to give the connection more strength and then I use my pilot holes and the markings to line up the support board. Once those are connected and feeling secure, I cover the whole platform with the carpet. The next thing to be assembled was the box. Not only did I want the outside of the box to be carpeted, but I wanted all the walls to be carpeted on the inside of the box as well to keep it comfy and cozy. So before I screwed all the sides together, I actually measured and cut out exact pieces of carpet and covered one side of three of my box pieces. Now that the inside of the box is all cozy, I'm going to use two screws at the corners to connect them together. Then I measured and cut one really long strip of carpet to attach to the outside of the box. This way it wrapped around all the sides so there were no seams at the corners. When I cut the archway, I made sure to cut it at different spots than when I cut the inside carpet piece so that the flaps would overlap at different points, giving full coverage around the arch opening. 
I left one side of the box, the front of the box, with the wood grain exposed to help break up the monotony of the gray carpet. So before I attached it, I took it outside and gave it a real thorough sanding to make it as smooth and safe as possible. Now my cat tree is looking like an Ikea project and it's almost done. I have my base, the platform, the box, and the lofts. And the bottom of the lofts is actually the top of the box. So now I'm going to attach the box to the platform and then the platform to the base. And finally, the lofts will go on top. Let's do this. The very last thing to add was the ramp up to the platform, which I attached with the help of my husband using hinges. I struggled for a long time on how to attach my ramp. Do I add more pieces to screw it into? Do I have to get angled brackets? Hinges are adjustable brackets. I didn't have to add any extra pieces or even calculate the angles I was working with. Just attach one end, swing the hinge, and attach it the other. Done. Oh, I am so happy with how it turned out. This finished cat tree is exactly what I wanted for Charlie. It stands at just shy of four and a half feet tall, a space at the bottom where his basket of toys will go, a cozy place to hide up off the ground, and lots of climbing surfaces to keep him happy and out of trouble. This project was one of my biggest, and if you wanna see some other things I've made, go check them out on my channel. This is She's Making Something, and Charlie says, thanks for watching.